Where are we now? So three stages, immediately before Brexit, immediately after Brexit, what's going to happen in the future? So this is the position immediately before Brexit. We have the Charter of Fundamental Rights, EU Charter of Fundamental Rights right at the top, pinnacle of law. We've got legislative instruments, the GDPR, the Law Enforcement Directive, the Privacy and E-Comms Directive, uh, and that's implemented. The, the GDPR is supplemented by the Data Protection Act 2018, and the Law Enforcement Directive is implemented by the Data Protection Act 2018, and then the E-Privacy Directive is implemented by the UK Privacy and Electronic Communication Regulation. So that's the position immediately before Brexit. Position immediately after Brexit, is looks a bit like this. Uh, so we get rid of the Charter of Fundamental Rights altogether, and that's, I think, partly done on political, political grounds as much as anything else. We can get rid of the two directives because we don't need to continue to give them force because they're already implemented in the UK. And then we suck down the GDPR into UK law, and it becomes the UK GDPR, and it's modified to the minimum amount necessary for it to continue to work. So that's where we are now. The rules in the UK are pretty much identical to the rules across the EU, with the exception of bits that don't work. So the ICO's participation in the EDPB, clearly that goes because it's no longer a member. But it's a very, still a very harmonized framework. And certainly my experience is advising clients on pan-European projects is it's still very easy to create a pan-European solution that will work across all of the different EU member states. Um, what's going to change? Well, two things are going to change, one of which we're going to discuss today, one of which we're not. Uh, the first thing that's going to change is the, probably it's going to be the Data Reform Act 2023, <laughs> something like that, but there will be a, a further amending <sighs> act that will amend the UK GDPR amend the Data Protection Act 2018 and amend the e-privacy regulations, and, and that's what we're going to discuss today. But I think it's also worth thinking about wider human rights and the fact that we still have the European Convention on Human Rights still relevant to the UK. We have the Human Rights Act 1998, which enables the domestic application of those rights, and importantly, Article 8, privacy. We're, we're probably going to have a Bill of Rights either this year or next year, which will not affect the substance of the ECHR, but it's going to make it harder to apply those rights within a UK context. And it will be interesting to see how that plays out in the development of UK data protection laws going forward. I think the other important thing to note is we're just talking about data protection today. We're just talking about amendments to data protection legislation, but there's a lot of other stuff going on in the EU. Uh, and I think there's the issue of the UK now starting to diverge from Europe, not because of these amendments so much, but just because it's standing still and is not going to implement any of the new reforms that are coming through. So in relation to data, for example, we've got uh, the Data Governance Act that was passed quite recently by the EU, greater public sharing of data, data altruism, uh, we've got the Health Data Spaces Regulation, which is still being discussed. That's quite an exciting idea to create a giant pool of European health data that can then be used for research and other purposes within a trusted environment. Uh, we've got the Data Act, which I think, Richard, you were discussing yesterday. Um, and then at some point, maybe we will have the uh, new European e-privacy regulation. Though I think I came to talk to the Cambridge Conference on this in 2018 and declared it imminent. Um, so anyway, that will, that will appear at some point soon. And then look at a whole host of other changes which are coming through. The NIST 2 directive, which is going to contain new cybersecurity obligations, the Digital Services Act, which will uh, address online harms and liability of intermediaries, the Digital Markets Act, really big changes in terms of competition law with really big data implications. And the UK is replicating some aspects of some of these bits of legislation. But I guess, you know, if you're looking at the, the, the direction that the UK is taking in the wider sense, it's important to understand that we are, we're drifting apart by, by standing still.